Alright, we're going to sing Listen to Our Hearts, and after this, as we sing the song, we would dismiss our young ones down to Children's Church. Looking around, I think they might already be down there. But All right. <clears throat> How do you explain? How do you describe? A love that goes from east to west And runs as deep that it is wide For you know all our hopes You know all our fears And words cannot express the love we feel But we long for you to hear So listen to our hearts Hear our spirit sing A song of praise that flows From those you have redeemed And we will use the words we know To tell you what an awesome God you are But words are not enough To tell you of our love So listen to our hearts If words could fall like rain From these lips of mine And if I had a thousand years Lord, I would still run out of time If you listen to my heart Every beat would say Thank you for the life Thank you for the truth Thank you for the way So listen to our hearts Hear our spirits sing A song of praise that flows From those you have redeemed And we will use the words we know To tell you what an awesome God you are But words are not enough Tell you of our love So listen to our hearts I'll get my jog in for the month That's enough It's enough exercise Good morning And uh, welcome to winter in northern Illinois um, we experienced that last weekend, and uh, obviously, uh, in kind of for everyone's safety, we felt like the elders felt like that it would be best not to have services because, as of last Saturday, or a week ago Saturday, it looked like it wasn't going to end anytime soon, and so um, we uh, we wanted to make sure people were safe. Well, so kind of as a public service announcement, and it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, we know that, Tim. But still, I just want to remind everybody, it is winter in northern Illinois. And so there are certain things that we need to be aware of every day, like snow. And it's slippery. And it can be deep. And sometimes there's ice. And sometimes there's black ice, like what's probably in some of your driveways, like mine right now. Um, so we need to be careful as we walk. Uh, We need to make sure we reduce our speed and watch out for all those crazies that think it's July. Those are just some things that we need to be aware of as we really survive um, and try to survive winter in northern Illinois. As I mentioned uh, in my Encourager article in January for this year, 2022 is pretty much a blank sheet of paper. Even though we're now nine days into the year, For all of us, it's pretty much a blank sheet of paper. But as each day goes by, we will choose what we want to write and what's written on that blank sheet of paper known as each of our own 2022s. Um, And and that's going to, we'll play a role in that, even though we won't be able to do everything that some other people will probably add to our sheet of paper. But we have control over a lot of what will go on our sheet of paper. And that also includes as a church. The church at North Park here pretty much is a blank sheet of paper still for 2022. And each of us will have a part in what gets written on that 
blank sheet of paper throughout the coming year. And it'll be things like decisions that we make, um, behaviors that we display, our attitudes. It'll be things like the actions that we take or that we choose not to take. Other things like habits that we have, both old and new. Words that we speak, opportunities that we seize, or opportunities that we seem to pass on. The degree of impact that we're going to have on others and on one, of, on one another will help create and add to these pieces of blank paper that we have individually as well as as a church. The relationships that we seek to embrace or that we choose to let go of are also going to add to that piece of paper. You know, often that we hear, particularly as the new year begins, we hear about things that are trending or things that are in for 2022. So I want to spend a little time today on just that, on things that are in, or more specifically, things that need to go in. And in this case, will need to go in to the shredder. So I just want us to focus on that for a little while. Into the shredder this morning. You see, with this new year in mind, one of the things that we need to look at individually are some inadequacies that maybe we have in our lives. Some things that we need to improve upon. And and I'm not saying that everyone or anyone even has some of these inadequacies, but through self-reflection, we might. And as I refer to you, I'm referring to me as well this morning because I know there are some things that I need to put in the shredder. And even if we don't have anything that we feel like needs to go in, maybe some of the thoughts that I share today will help keep our attention so that if some starts to creep into our life, right away we'll recognize them. And we'll make sure that they aren't part of what's written on our 2022. And then for those that might have viewed my peak of the week on December 29th, the two of you, um, I specifically mentioned that instead of dreading 2022, because there's a lot of unknowns, because we have a blank piece of paper, instead of dreading that, let's celebrate it because God's going to give us a lot of opportunities. And one of the things that we can choose to do in 2022 is this. We can make 2022 a great year for God, both within our own lives as well as as a church. We can choose to make 2022 a great year for God. But in order to do that, we've got to put some things into the shredder first. We've got to get rid of them. Because in order for 2022 to be a great year for God, there are certain things that we can't have in 2022. So that's where I want us to focus today. Okay? Um, so the first thing that I think needs to go into the shredder, or that I want us to look at to go into the shredder today, is something called indifference. Indifference. Now, just how important is your spirituality to you? I didn't say your religion. I said your spirituality. How important is your relationship to God? How significant are things like your prayer life, Bible study, embracing Jesus as your Savior, understanding you know, what God expects of you, your commitment to being part of this church family, the importance of serving, how significant are those things? If, if your approach to, that, to those things amounts to, well, I'm okay if I do, and I'm okay if I don't, or I'm only doing this because to please my spouse or to, because of my kids, well, then indifference really when it comes to our spirituality and our relationship with God needs to go into the shredder. I mean, there can be no place really for indifference in 2022. Not if 2022 
is going to be, and this will be interesting to make this work. It's worked every other time. Come on. Why is it not working? This is it. Nobody unplugged me. <laughs> this is supposed to work. It's not a magic trick. Come on. Isn't that crazy? We'll do it this way. And we'll put it in the shredder just like that. Satan is not going to stop me from doing what I want to do today. <clears throat> wow. So, moving on. There's a passage in Colossians that really, I think, underscores the reason that indifference needs to go in that thing that doesn't work, but in the shredder. Paul wrote this. He said, if you've been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above. Where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God, set your minds on, on, on things above not on things here on earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. You see, I think if our focus is on the things above, on where Jesus is, on all things Jesus, then indifference will not be part of our 2022. Because our focus is going to be just that, on doing things to please Christ, to please God. And that whole thing about, well, I don't really care if I do this or don't, that won't be a part of it. And so, for 2022 to be a great year for God, indifference needs to go into the shredder somehow, some way. I think another thing that we need to put in the shredder for 2022 to be a great year for God is what's called inactivity. You see, inactivity can really paralyze someone, can really destroy them. I mean. I guess my question would be, are you a spiritual couch potato? Is your favorite activity inactivity? When needs arise within the church family, are you the first to raise your hand and say, I'm in? Or do you wait to hope that the list gets filled out and that the need gets addressed so that I can just stay inactive? Do you wait to be asked? hoping that the request will be satisfied. You see, inactivity can lead to spiritual death in an individual, in a Christian, but can also lead to spiritual death in a church. And we just can't allow that to happen. There's, there's no room for that. If, if 2022 is going to be a great year for God, individually as well as a church, then inactivity definitely needs to go into the shredder, and rather than try that again, it's just going in the easiest way I can put it in there. But it's going in. Because there's no place for it in 22, 2022. If we want North Park and our own lives to reflect that it's a great year for God. <clears throat> in Ephesians, Paul would write this. He said, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to, for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Now, that passage isn't about watching others work. It's about doing works. And so if we're to do works, that's going to keep us from being inactive. That's going to keep us from being idle. Satan wants us to be that way. But to make 2022 a great year for God, we need to make sure that inactivity doesn't show up individually or as a church. Another one that I think needs to go in the shredder that could be part of things that we do are in, is called inconsistency. You see, <clears throat> inconsistency, can you be counted on? Or are you more of a hit or miss kind of person when it comes to your spiritual life, when it comes to being a Christian, when it comes to being part of this church family. You know, would God ever ask of you, well, what have you done for me lately? What have you done for me lately? He would ask you that if you have inconsistency in your life. When it comes to church attendance, is that a, is that a priority 
or a convenience? Do you visit the grocery store more often than you attend worship services? When it comes to your involvement in working for the Lord, have you been more of a fair weather Christian than not? You see, if your faithfulness depends on kind of which way the wind is blowing or, or how tired you are after a Saturday night or what's on TV on Sunday, then it's time to put that inconsistency into the shredder. You see, there can be no room for it in 2022. There can be no place for it if 2022 is going to be a great year for God. Jesus himself said this in Mark chapter 12. He said, And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Jesus said that. You know, if, we're gonna, if we do that, there is no way inconsistency is going to be part of our 2022. So we're just going to toss it in the shredder as well. It needs to go there if we want 2022 to be a great year for God. Now this next one, I'm not sure I should have chose it or not. So I'm still kind of not sure, you see, because it's indecisiveness. That's why. Do you have trouble making up your mind? Some of you got that. When it comes to serving God, do you have trouble making up your mind when it comes to serving God? Are you still wrestling with whether or not to even become a Christian? To put Jesus on in baptism, are you undecided? Or perhaps you made that decision once upon a time, but now you're maybe wavering as to whether or not that's really who I want to be and what I want to do. When you're at, at work with your friends, are you a different person than when you're with church people? Do I sign up for this ministry or do I wait to see if they really need me? I'm just going to sit back. I don't know what I want to do. Do I ask my friend to attend a worship service with me or do I not because I'm afraid maybe if they come it might hurt my friendship with them? If your decision to be fully engaged in the Lord really depends on almost a flip of the coin. Or if you found yourself frequently saying, well, do I or don't I, then your indecisiveness is keeping you from being as effective, as impactful as you can be, as I can be. And you know, because of that, there's no room for indecisiveness in 2022. In our lives, in our church life, if we're going to make 2022 a great year for God. You see, even the wise Solomon said this about indecisiveness. He said, commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. If we'll dedicate the things that we do and base that on what God wants of us, he'll make sure things work out for us. But we have to make that decision. Otherwise, this right here indecisiveness needs to go in the shredder. There's no place for it in 2022. But we have to decide that we want to make 2022 a great year for God. This next one, when I think about Jesus, when I think about his life, when I think about what we read about in the Gospels, Jesus was all about welcoming people. Jesus was all about accepting people and making them feel valued. If you don't embrace that, if you don't display that, then maybe there's a part of you that needs to go in the shredder. Maybe what happens is that you simply take the, the approach of being what we would call inhospitable. And it doesn't mean it's not inhospitable. It doesn't mean it's all about inviting somebody to your house for lunch. I'm open to that if that helps you. But, but it's more than that. It's a lot more than inviting somebody over to your house. If you're being inhospitable, that's a, that's a problem. And it impacts how people see us as individuals as well as a church. I mean, are you drawn to those who may be visiting in our worship services? 
Are you drawn to them? The guests that we have at the pantry, if you happen to be volunteering, do you try to do everything you can to make them feel welcomed and valued and not embarrassed? Do you choose to turn somebody away or to bring them in if they need help? It all depends on whether we're hospitable or inhospitable. Do you stay in your comfort zone or do you try to, to introduce yourself to somebody you don't know? Hello is not a hard word to say if you're trying to meet somebody that you've never met before. The stranger who walks in here, the person that you see who may be crying, even in the grocery store, who may be crying standing outside, all you have to do is say hello to start a conversation, to see what you can do to help, to see what we can do to help, to be hospitable. But if all of that is foreign, if it's just something that you, you don't want to do, if you're being judgmental because of somebody's appearance, if you're being judgmental because of their background, whatever they've come from, whether intentional or not, does your body language, does your tone of voice, does, does your facial expression to them, does your extended social distancing, it's like, yeah, they're over here and I'm not going over there, does that signal to them that you have no interest in them? You see, if showing kindness to a total stranger, if, if whether it's at the grocery store or in traffic, yes, in traffic, or on a sidewalk, if that's something that's just not something you do, then your tendency is going to be that you are inhospitable, that I am inhospitable, and that needs to go in the shredder. There's no room for that in 2022. If you are going to make 2022 a great year for God individually, and if we are going to make 2022 a great year for God as a church, it simply needs to go into the shredder. You know, there's a passage of scripture that's one of my favorites. It says this, it says, brotherly love continue. Let brotherly love continue. <clears throat> But also it says, do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. And again, hospitality is simply being kind. It's recognizing people. It's making them feel valued. It's making them feel welcome. And then from there, we can show love to them also. That's where being inhospitable needs to, needs to go. Finally, if you're clueless, I'm not saying you are, but if you're clueless, if you just don't care, if you place yourself above others, then maybe you need to seriously consider this. You may need to seriously consider that you need to put some insensitivity into the shredder. Insensitivity. Have you made a habit of speaking before you think? Or of saying things that are hurtful or blunt or opinionated? or even uninformed? Has jumping to conclusions or, or lack of active listening resulted in words that were spoken that eventually you wish you hadn't said? Or if they cause you to think, oh man, I shouldn't have thought that. I shouldn't have thought that, well, they deserve what they got. I shouldn't have thought that, well, they only have themselves to blame. I shouldn't have thought, well, I tried to tell them they wouldn't listen, or it's no wonder they're in this mess. If those are the things that we allow to come into our minds and into our hearts, then we're simply being insensitive and even hurtful. Instead of being reprimanding or reminding someone of maybe what they did or didn't do, perhaps they simply need to be loved instead of reprimanded. Perhaps they simply need to be thanked. Perhaps they need to be acknowledged or valued. You see, the love that we're to have for one another can't be fully realized if we're insensitive. 
if our words and our thoughts and our actions tend to dem demolish, really, rather than to build up, then this insensitivity needs to go in the shredder. There can be no place for it in 2022. You see, insensitivity has got to be done away with, and we can't have it. We can't have it here. We can't really have it in our lives and say that we're followers of God because God is all about love, and that's what we should be. There's no place for it in 2022 if we want it to be a great year for God. Paul wrote in 1 Thessalonians, he said, Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you're doing. Maybe the people at Thessalonica were already doing that regularly. We need to be mindful of making sure that the things that we say are to build up and they don't end up tearing down. Because we definitely can't make 2022 a great year for God unless we put insensitivity into the shredder. For the next couple of weeks, I'm going to turn my thoughts more into what we should be, not what we shouldn't be. And so I want us to focus on that for the next couple of weeks about what we can do here as a church, as well as individuals, to not only make this a great year for God, but also to draw us closer to God in our relationship with him. But before we do that, we needed to get rid of some things. We needed to look at ourselves and say, you know what? We can't have that. Not if we're going to be all we can be for God. You know, the things that I mentioned today, they're not really trendy. And they're not really fashionable, especially for a Christian. But they, need, they do need to be in. They need to be in the shredder. And I think by each of us placing indifference and inactivity and inconsistency and indecisiveness and being inhospitable and our insensitivity in the shredder. I think we're going to be able to celebrate 2022. We're going to be able to rejoice in 2022. We're going to be able to love the opportunities that God is going to give us, not dread what's the unknown of the new year. So let's make 2022 a great year for God. We're going to focus on that in the next couple of weeks. But today I wanted our focus to be on the things that we can't allow to happen in our lives if we're going to be all we can be for God. Thank you.